Hello, in this video I'm going to review some strategic issues for completing derivations and in particular involving derivation setup and subderivations when we're setting up a derivation and then also a couple of different subderivation strategies to do once we're stuck. So let's take a look. So when we're setting up a derivation, uh, how are we going to proceed? Well, it depends upon what we're trying to show. So if we're trying to show a letter, then we can now, we'll just do assume ID and proceed and probably we'll box and cancel with ID. We might box and cancel with DD, but it's likely that we'll box and cancel with CD. And so we want to be looking for a contradiction. If we're trying to show a negation, then we'll do the same thing. We'll make an indirect assumption and proceed. And again, it's likely that we'll box and cancel with ID, not necessarily. Again, maybe direct derivation, but likely with indirect derivation. And so again, we're going to want to have our eye out for any contradiction. If we're trying to show a conditional, then we'll want to say assume CD and then show consequent. What happens after that? It depends upon what the consequent is. If, we, if the consequent is a letter or a negation, then we would make an indirect assumption. If the consequent is itself a, is a conditional, then we'd repeat this. We'd say assume CD and show consequent again. So whatever we do in there uh, is going to just depend. Whatever happens in there, that depends upon what it is that we're, what uh, the circle actually is. Whatever circle actually is, once we complete this little subderivation, we'll have show circle, we'll have circle, we'll have canceled the show line, so we'll actually have circle, and then we can apply CD to that line in order to box and cancel the show line. Now we know we don't always need to do this show con subderivation because we've done a bunch of derivations where we didn't need to, but it's never going to hurt and it's often necessary, so we might as well just go ahead and make it a habit. What about when we're trying to show a conjunction? Well, we know that in fact, uh, in many or in some cases, when we're trying to show a conjunction, we don't need to make any assumptions and we don't need to do any subderivations because we've done a bunch of derivations like that. They were just straightforward direct derivations. But the this format here is uh, the general format that we want to proceed with. So we have our first line will be a show the conjunction. And then we don't actually necessarily want to make an assumption. Uh, we wouldn't really be able to do much with that assumption. Uh, it would be an indirect assumption. It would just be show negation of the conjunction. And what are we going to do with that? Not much. So instead, we can proceed immediately to showing the first conjunct. And what will we do then? Well, it depends upon what the first conjunct is. Maybe it's another conjunction. Maybe it's conditional. Maybe it's a negation. Maybe it's a letter. Apply the relevant strategy to there. But we'll eventually complete that subderivation. Having completed that, we won't be ready to complete the derivation. First, we'll have to do the subderivation of the other conjunct. So then we'll do that. Again, what that subderivation is going to look like inside depends upon what circle actually is. But once we complete both of those subderivations, then we put box and circle together using a join, and we get the, the conclusion, and we apply dd to that line in which we have the conclusion, and we box and cancel. So uh, we know in the end we're going to put them together with a join and direct derivation. What's going to happen inside? How are we going to box and cancel the show box and show circle? We'll just have to see what happens with those two derivations or subderivations. Okay, good. So those are the way in which we set up a derivation. And now the way in which we set up a derivation will include these subderivations. What happens when we get stuck? So, so we know that when our, our derivation gets stuck, we need to do a subderivation. So we've seen examples of these, and the show and neg idea is older, but we have two basic um, subderivation strategies with associated show commands. What are they? So the first one is the show a neg command, and we might use that when we have a negation of a conditional. When you have when your derivation gets stuck and you have a negated conditional, well, it's the derivation is stuck because you need to do something with that negated conditional, but you haven't because we you probably, uh, well, if you haven't used it, it's because you don't have any rules that apply to it. And in general, we don't have rules that usefully apply to the negation of a conditional. We can't do MP, we can't do MT. DN is just going to stack negations. So in general, there's not anything we can do with that. Sometimes there is in specific cases, but in general, there's not. Except if we get the unnegation of it, if we get the conditional by itself, then we have a contradiction and we can apply ID. So that's when the derivation is stuck and we have the negation of a conditional, that's what we want to do. Show the conditional, 
once the conditional has been shown, we have what we need for contradiction for ID. So there's a show command that will helpfully actually write out the conditional for us. So if we have the negation of the conditional on line X, then we'll say show on negation X, and that will write out just the conditional. And it's the same thing if we have the negation of a conjunction and our derivation is stuck. We don't have rules that in general usefully apply to the negation of a conjunction, except if we get the conjunction also, then we can apply ID. So we'll want to show the conjunction. Having done so, we can then apply ID. The show unneg command, if we have the negation of a conjunction on line X and we write show unneg of X later, then we'll get a new show line that's just the unnegation, which in that case is the conjunction. So when you have the negation of something and your derivation is stuck, do show unneg. If and, and show one neg is always better than show ant because show one neg lets you box and cancel right away once you're done with it. But if you can't do show on negation, your derivation is stuck, then it may be because there's a conditional that you've been unable to use. You haven't been able to do MP or MT with it because you don't have the antecedent and you also don't have the negation of the consequent. So what should you do at that point? Try to show the antecedent of the conditional. If you get the antecedent, then you can do MP and that's not gonna meet, immediately end the derivation applying MP will just give you circle and maybe circle will then immediately let you end the derivation or you'll have to do something else else with circle but at least you'll have moved the derivation forward so you say I have an unused conditional good I'm gonna get that I'll get the antecedent I'll apply MP that moves my derivation forward all right and we have a show command for that show ant show antecedent and we also have a line number in there so where the conditional that we is unused is on line X then we write show ant of x, and the computer will write out show, and then whatever the antecedent of x actually is. So those are our subderivation strategies for when our derivation gets stuck. So good luck. If you have any questions, please let me know.